welcome guys Ifan back again with another video and this video is the second video in the series that we had started a few days ago on the math for O level GCE O level and the topic of this video is the number system okay so let's start uh, we can start at the top okay uh, the number system any number that you can possibly think of it's going to be part of the number system and that's what this video is going to be about some numbers are real and some numbers are imaginary so real numbers are still uh, like we said all the possible numbers that you could possibly think of so what is imaginary so let's let's see if we can explain or define imaginary numbers Okay, so what we're going to do here now is we're going to try and explain or try and understand what imaginary numbers are. Now, if you remember from um, earlier math classes, um, you know, low level than the, the O level, uh, when you take a square of a number, uh, basically what you're doing is you're multiplying a number by itself. Okay, and the answer is the square of the number that you started with. Now. There is no number that when you square would give you a negative one, a negative four in this case, because negative negative gives you a positive. In order for for you to get a negative number, one of the numbers you're multiplying with has to be negative, but that goes against what you know taking a square is. So there is no number, ideally, uh, that would uh, give you when squared would give you a negative four. Now, we can uh, take a square root of a negative 4, but we'll have to assume something, okay? We'll have to assume that the result is going to be imaginary. It's not going to be a, a real number. It's going to be an imaginary number, okay? So that's the assumption that we'll have to work with. If we want to do a square root of a negative number, in this case, a negative 4. Now, the square root of, of 1 is 1. And now we're going to assume the square root of a negative 1 is lowercase i in italics. It's always going to be lowercase. It's always going to be in italics. So that's the symbol uh, that we're going to use uh, for a negative 1, the square root of negative 1. Let's see how we will do the square root of negative 4 is equal to 2i. Uh, we can break up the negative 4 into plus 4 and a negative 1. Now we can put the plus 4 under the square root sign and the negative 1 under the square root sign. And the square root of 4 is going to be 2. And we already know uh, the square root of minus 1 is lowercase italics i. So the square root of a negative 4 is going to be 2i. We have uh, figured out how to take roots of uh, negative numbers using the symbol i. Now, let's see uh, what we can uh, understand about the real numbers. Now, real numbers uh, can be uh, subdivided into rational and irrational numbers. Okay. The definition of rational number is a set of numbers that can be written or expressed as a ratio of two integers. So uh, when you put it in, in, in a mathematical form, it's going to be A divided by B, or you could say A upon B. Now, examples uh, of this could be five by six, or three by four, or seven by eight. Any of those uh, could be, uh, you know, could be uh, said to be rational numbers. So essentially, a rational number is basically any integer divided by any integer. So if we have to express a number as a rational number, what we can do is uh, take that number and put it in the numerator and put a 1 in the denominator. So any integer divided by 1 is also a rational number. So examples of us uh, making integers into rational numbers by dividing by 1 uh, could be 3 by 1 or uh, 7 by 1 or say 20 by 1. 
So these are all examples of rational numbers and uh, integers that are being expressed as rational numbers. The only number that you cannot have in the denominator when you're making a rational number is the number zero, because that's what we call undefined. Uh, so any integer divided by zero is undefined, so that's not allowed. Just to understand uh, what we mean when we say uh, anything divided by zero is undefined, let's see if we take examples of you know, rational numbers and we would keep on reducing the denominator, okay? So in the first example, we have 10 over 10, all right? Now, the answer is one. So when you divide 10 by 10, the answer is one. Now, let's reduce the denominator down to five, okay? So uh, now 10 divided by five is two. So you see how from 10 divided by 10 equal one uh, to 10 divided by five equals two, how the answer is has become bigger. Now, let's further reduce the denominator uh, down to uh, two. So 10 divided by two is five. So the answer is, you know, is gradually becoming bigger, okay? Now, let's further reduce uh, the denominator down to one. Now, 10 divided by one is 10. So you see how from 10 upon 10 giving you one, then 10 by five giving you two, 10 by two giving you five, and 10 by one giving you 10, how the answer is gradually becoming bigger. So if you reduce the denominator down to zero, the smallest number that you could, a non-negative number that you could have, uh, the answer is gonna become so big that it goes to infinity. So this is not allowed, this is not defined, okay? Okay, uh, so we had said that rational numbers are the set of numbers that can be written or expressed as a ratio of two integers. Okay, so that means is irrational numbers are numbers uh, which cannot be expressed as ratio of two integers or uh, irrational numbers have non-repeating, non-ending decimals. Now, what do we mean by that? Let's see. So, uh, we'll try and uh, further understand irrational numbers by an example. Now, who can recognize this number highlighted in yellow? Okay. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people know that this is the value of pi. Okay. Now, this, uh, the three dots at the very end, uh, mean that the, the, the decimal uh, numbers, they keep going on, they're non, uh, never ending. So, and they don't repeat, okay? So this is an example of an irrational number because you cannot express this as a fraction, okay? As a ratio, as a fraction, you cannot express it as a fraction. Therefore, this is an example of an irrational number, all right? There are times when a number appears to be irrational, but it's actually rational, okay? So let's take the example of uh, 0 0.33333, okay? Now, actually it says one by three, okay? Now, you would think because the, the uh, 0 0.3333 is never ending, which is a quality of irrational number, this needs to be irrational. The 0 0.3333 would be irrational, but it's not. Because number one, it can be uh, written down as one by three, one divided by three, okay? The second thing is, uh, the second quality of uh, irrational numbers is that the decimals need to be non-repeating. In this case, you got three repeating endlessly, okay? So this number appears to be uh, irrational, but actually is rational. So you have to kind of be, be careful, make sure that you, you do not accidentally uh, tag a number as irrational when it actually is rational, okay? That's it for the, the part one of the video on number system. Uh, in part two, we will cover or explain the other uh, numbers that we have uh, up on the screen right now. Now, uh, if you did like this video, please kindly give it a thumbs up 
And if you would like to see more videos like this, please kindly subscribe and make sure you also click on the bell icon. So uh, you'll get the automatic updates from YouTube whenever a new video is uploaded. And uh, do let us know what you thought of this video uh, in the comments uh, section down below. Thank you.